I feel as passionately about this watch as Omega feels about improving it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 1932, Omega brings 30 chronographs to time the entire Olympics, the most important sporting event in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Then, since then, they've released some of their most beautiful watches ever in this collection. And now we have a new watch, which ooh, I wouldn't say is the most beautiful watch ever in their collection. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, let's do it. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. My name is Michael, and this video is sponsored by Domain Money. Terrific. More yes. on them later. Um, all right. So today we're talking about one of my favorite brands, one of your favorite brands, yes, right? Indeed. Omega. Yes, indeed. We've recently been really impressed with their uh, whole Seamaster line, right? All the shades of blue. Yes. They did a great job. Uh, Omega's had kind of a weird year with their releases. There hasn't been like one big pop and circumstance moment. There's been a bunch of little releases. Pop and circumstance. Kind of odd. But now there's another one. Huh? Great vocab word. The Olympics is next summer. This is nothing new. Omega always releases watches to mm -hmm. commemorate Olympic events. Mm -hmm. Some better than others some better than others just, there's a there's definitely a golden era so mm -hmm. we'll go through the list of watches that omega released ending on the modern one but also paying special attention to the first the third and then one that actually got re-released in 2007 because i would say it is probably the most beautiful omega of all time really i think you'd agree wow yeah okay. you've probably seen it before terrific too. i'm looking forward to it Gonna say was I think that it's really the Olympics is one of the very few you know, events or or sponsored events that actually like matter with watches right when you like, think about the actual we're actually timing it yes and when you think about how important this is like I was thinking about 1932 the first time I was like I'm assuming you did a good job timing the event yeah right but like we're our Records from 1932 really hard to beat now? Or were they really easy? You know what well, I that's mean? That's like, different. Yeah, like I think that just our athleticism has just changed. Right? No, of course. But, I mean, like, was it like, oh, for some reason 1932 was incredibly impressive yeah. and then 1936 was not. It's just crazy, like, looking at the technology when you go back in history and watch history and, and when they invented, you know, lasers later on, but even before then, you know, there were timing mechanisms that had, like, this string that when the string would break, that would set the mark, that would cut the tape. Yeah. And that, you know, it's wild to see the evolution of professional timing. You've right? never, there are very few events that a watch company can do where messing up would make an entire nation angry. Exactly. And I don't mean just the people of the nation, like just the commoners. I mean the government, everybody. Exactly. Like, no, no, no. Exactly. So 1932, they had 30 chronographs to time the entire event and just one watchmaker, mm -hmm. which wow. is crazy. Yeah. Then we'll skip to 2010 briefly, just because this is the coolest piece of technology I think Omega introduced. That is a starter gun. That's cool. Yeah. So that you is really cool. Shoot it. it or you pull the trigger, Sets light the pops out, and then behind the people, there are speakers that do like a cap gun sound. Wow. And, you go. and, yeah. that, and that sets the time. That sets the time. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Can't be more precise than that. Nope. So, then we start off, obviously, this is the original 1932 Olympic stop watch. So now they obviously go for six figures. You'll also remember the Speedmaster that paid homage to the- I do remember well. that, yes. Now you can start to see the connections. Yep, Beautiful. absolutely right. Then, <sighs> immediately. Oh, wow. Immediately. Oh my God. This may be the most beautiful Jesus, watch Mary that Joseph. Omega has ever released, especially oh on the bracelet. Created to commemorate the Melbourne Olympic Games in 1956, these watches were one of the first Olympic watches that Omega created specifically to commemorate the Games. Oh my this God. This is prime Omega. This logo on the dial. It's amazing. Oh, it's fantastic. And you know what I really like? Mm. The fact that- You're like, dude, it's actually the logo in the center. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so like super weird opinion. What I actually love about some, something yeah, maybe you yeah. didn't notice is the rings. <laughs> so we're going downhill to many opinions and we're coming back up. Oh, wow. You know what happened, dude? The quartz crisis was, just, you could see that a brand was in crisis. If you look at one watch and I then know. the next watch, not that this is a terribly ugly watch. It's a bit of a product of the 70s. Right. But... This is the 1976 Seamaster Chrono Quartz Montreal Olympics Albatross. Wow. Yeah. Cool looking watch. 
you just immediately see what happened with the quartz crisis. Cool looking watch. I would recommend this to someone as like an Apple Watch alternative, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You really want like, to get hey, ironic. You like technology. Well, here's a good entry into fine watchmaking. Here's a brand. Blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it, it's, it's not something I would wear. No. But it is it's very cool. Too. And if I did see it on someone's wrist, I would probably say something. Oh, if you, if you see this on someone's wrist, you'd be like, wow. You're wow. Really, you're, you're deep really, into Omega. Yeah, you're deep into Omega. This is also a very collectible piece to a lot of people because mm. it's Olympics and Omega. Right. But it, it's the transition from what yep. they were doing to what they started doing yep. is wild. Totally. Then we move on. This is the re-release that we talked about. But this is the 2007 re-release. Mm -hmm. They only made 100 of these top watches. Again, fantastic watch. Yep. Then we go That's to 2008 nice. and we get the 16 re-edition. Wow. Fantastic. Still, it's not the original. They don't have that beautiful cross in the middle or anything like that. But that design is very, very mm -hmm. difficult to beat. I think that's fantastic. I think if I was a, um, which is funny, I know someone that does sit on the Olympic Committee. I should read for LA Olympics for whenever the hell that's coming. Um, but that um, they, that would be the watch that I would be wearing if I, like one of these watches. If I was an executive at the Olympic Committee, I'd be wearing like a vintage Omega oh, like, with yeah. this Olympic, uh, Olympic double stamp, you know, not the later ones where it's just like the circles with oh, the different we'll get colors. To that because yeah. that, I, this is what I'd be wearing. When we get to the, what well, we'll get into in a second, I feel like there's a noticeable change between what Omega was doing and then what they decided the Olympic commemorative watches were going to be. Yep. But before we get there, you said, when are the LA Olympics? Are there Olympics in LA? Yeah, 20, like 28 or 20, something like That's that. That's when Omega, start, they started in LA. So Did they? this would be the first. I thought they started Olympic. in Greece. <laughs> not Olympus. Like, no, 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 not that. <laughs> so that would probably be a sick re-release. Yeah, that would be cool. Yep. But they'll probably do the uh, stopwatch. This video is brought to you by Domain Money. You can have an accountant. You can have a broker. You can have a ton of different things, or you can send everything through Domain Money. Yeah, I, I think that you know money is truly one of the most you know difficult things even to manage once it's earned. Right? It, it, it is. It is a very difficult you well, know manage save. Well, I don't know. I don't it's magic that. budgeting. Say it, it, it's 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 budgeting magic. saving taxes. It's, I need insurance. I need taxes. I need this. I need that. Exactly. It, you know, you work so hard all year to, to make however much money you do, and then it's a whole separate issue on on what to do with that money or, or who to trust. You know, yeah. with that money. So having using domain money, having a, a financial advisor, basically a concierge, someone that is on call to to discuss via you know text, phone, email, whatever, uh, is incredibly valuable. Right. You work so hard to make whatever money you do all year, and then. It's it's a whole separate job to figure out how to basically make the most out of it, how to mm -hmm. make the most uh, informed decisions in all these different facets, right? So domain money helps you with exactly that, right? They assign you a personal advisor. Our guy's name is Brian. What's up, Brian? Hey, What's Brian. up, B? Uh, <laughs> and, and, and you develop a personal rapport with someone that is an expert in, in these fields, right? That can lead you the right direction. Uh, let me tell you something. During tax season, it's incredibly helpful. Um, but even just in, in general month-to-month -month accounting, um, I'm definitely the sort of person Person that needs someone like that, right? There's so many different things going in and out and accounts receivable and all these different reoccurring payments and all this shit. Yeah. So to be able to have someone to say, hey, what's up, dude? Uh, I think you need to take a look at this, you know, when you have a second, uh, I wouldn't have done that, right? I just wouldn't have been on as, uh, as on top of it. Yeah. Um, you, you are working and when you're not working, you're trying to enjoy your life. Uh, and I just, I, I refuse to be the sort of person that at the end of their long work day sits in front of, you know, a bunch of pieces of paper trying to make sense out of what to do with whatever money you were able to make, right? I, yeah. I just I just refuse to be that person. I'd rather spend the very small $79 a month uh, to buy that time with an expert so that when it is my turn now to make decisions, I have all the information. So yeah, your advisor is there not only to manage your current money, but to also help you project what you'll be making or what you'll be doing in five, 10 years, so on, so forth. Understanding your goals and reverse engineering them. And like we said, it's also incredibly important that it's $79 a month because yeah. a lot of the times if you're working with a broker, it's 3%. What is 3% yeah. on my net worth? That varies a lot. And Same thing when you're paying your taxes, that's a separate fee with other accountants and stuff. And even with the brokers and the accountants, again, there's so much of a difference between those guys that you can't yeah. ask a question to this one, it's not their field. The $79 a month is is just, it's a, it's a one-stop shop, it's just, it's just worth it, right? It's just worth it. Yeah, and you can use our link to skip the wait list and try domain risk-free for 30 days. I definitely think you should. I'm sure you'll be as lucky to find a, a manager through domain money like we did with Brian, that is just not only helpful, but just a really just great person that you're going to love to work with. So that's it. We're on a joint account. Yes. Yeah. 
2012, Seamaster 1948, Coaxial, London. This is obviously to celebrate the London Olympic Games. God, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to let you know. Yeah, no, I really didn't know. Oh, really? I wasn't patronizing you. I, re I thought, I, I, know, I, I know that watch. I've seen that watch. Oh, I just meant by the title. Oh, no, no, but I saw the photo and I had no oh, idea that was a, that oh. was an Olympic watch. No idea. Gorgeous watch. Still. Yeah, super beautiful. It looks a lot like my Seamaster, except with a subdial. Yes, it does. Yeah. Then we move on to Omega's current strategy for Olympic watches. We start off with the Omega Rio 2016 collection. Yeah. I like this, but it yeah. feels very 2016. Mm -hmm. Probably 2016. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't know. It's cool. It's, it's cool. It's probably yeah. better on a, on a NATO or something. And on the wrist, it looks cool because you have those pops of color. That's it nice. does. But you need to be really into the Olympics. like, Or you need to be a yeah. bit into the Olympics. Yeah. There's, you know? Especially the one thing that everybody calls out about this watch is look at the size of the date window. Yeah. It looks undersized. very, very undersized. Totally. Agreed. So, this is a noticeable change and we'll kind of extrapolate on those thoughts when we get to the newest watch release. Which is now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I ended up cutting off there because the 2016 Rio collection, moving forward, all the other releases kind, kind of, of have the same DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, Omega has an official like Olympic collection now, which is, yeah. you've probably seen it. It's like green around the dial and blue or whatever. I can also yeah. show you if you need to see it. Mm. But noticeable change. This is the 2024 Paris Omega Seamaster 300M Special Edition. They use Moonshine Gold, which is the first thing I'll say immediately... I was like, that feels like a swatch term now. Moonshine, Moonshine gold. gold. Yeah, right? Wow. That That's was the first really time. really interesting. Like, like, not that it matters, but I, like, I agree with you. Yeah. And that is, that's interesting market research. Like, Moonshine Gold has been an Omega term for much longer than it has been a swatch term. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now that is a swatch word. You're right. It's very swatch word. Yep. Because I read it and I was like, oh, it's a collaboration with swatch. That's Oof. wild. Oof. Every, any Omega like executive watching this right now is like, oh, <laughs> I told them, I told Stop. them this was stupid. <laughs> and Swatch is like, oh, yeah, cool. money. <laughs> yeah. Again, date window is tiny. Um, that, I feel like this is one of the most beautiful Seamasters that I've seen in a while in terms of look. But everybody always says, one, bracelet needs work. It's huge. It's chunky. It's very big. Two, the helium escape valve. I would love to see this watch without it. And then three, this watch, much like the real watch, just feels like it's not of this era anymore. Yes. Really, really strongly. The Speedmaster 100%. is 100% timeless. This just does not feel like 2023. 100%. Anymore. Do you 100%. notice that? What do you think it is? You know, I mean, uh, in short, <laughs> yeah. like, for all aesthetic purposes, you know, this is the same, the, the same design that Pierce Brosnan wore in, the, in those James Bonds, which was true, true. 30 years ago. Oh, so it's like the Seamaster, the Seamasters yeah. Sea have not really gotten a, a significant design update in 30 years. Even the bracelet is just up. Right. Like it's all kind of the same, whereas the sub is very different. Everything is very different. I was even keeping it with Omega and I was thinking the Speedy. The Speedy's, the speed, been, updated the speedy's quite been updated quite a bit, right? So this watch still does seem a little forgotten or they're, they seem very stubborn. Like this is the best design. We can't improve it. We are settling here. It's like, because what's the other explanation? That you're too lazy to change it? It's been like 30 years. Yeah, it's been a very, it's very enough. long time. So, yes, you know? it, it is released, but... Like, and things have changed about the Seamaster. I'm not saying oh, yeah. that. Like, you know, for sure. Really, the inside But not enough. Changed. Not enough has changed. Because it still feels like an older design. Yeah. It, palpably an older design. Yes. Like when people wear it, I'm like, ah, yes. Yeah, you probably got that watch. No matter when they got it. I'm like, you probably got that watch in the 90s. Yeah. Or the 80s, maybe. Right. Maybe the um, Titanium Bond watch is like an update. Titanium Bond seemed like an update, but it also didn't have... It just the br Not having that bracelet was a huge update, right? Yeah, exactly, like, right, right. You know, it was the mesh bracelet or a NATO, right? Whereas these older bracelets, they're, they're clunky. I was going to say, imagine this on... Not a Jubilee, but like the equivalent of like the new Speedmaster bracelet. Well, have you seen like the, co the company that makes them? Company that makes what? The, like the replacement bracelets? No. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, Christian's showing me... What is it? Forster? Forster. Forster. Forst Forstner. Forstner. What a terrible surname. <laughs> yeah, honestly. But even these, like, we, I'm looking at a flat link. <laughs> on the, what? I could just see, like, in a town hall. Uh, Mr. Forrester, speak up. It's Forstner. Forstner. Uh, Forstner. Forstner. Forrester. It's Forstner. 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 Wife is next to him, like, Forstner. I'm actually hyphenated. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and my my maiden name is Foster, so it's it's Foster Forstner. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> I just changed my. We name. frankly thought we were related, but even on the flat link bracelet, it does look better. I just think it needs a design refresh in general. Yeah. But either way, still a cool watch. Stainless steel, fifty nine hundred dollars. This version, eighty seven hundred dollars. Mm. Only sold in a Paris boutique. Not limited, but uniquely numbered. Not going to be really heavily produced. What do you think of that price tag before we get into some other thoughts? Um, you know, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of the watch. Yeah. So, you know. I guess I should say, what do you think of the difference between $5,900 and $8,700 for stainless steel to Paris special edition gold bezel? $3,000 for the gold bezel? It's a, and the limited edition. But you have to be in Paris. Yeah, like, no. Just, I mean, that's it. That's it. Just no. It's not something I'm interested in. Um, you know, it's not something I'm interested in. You know, Okay, let's put my put myself in the shoes of someone who wants this watch. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Who cares? Right. right. Whatever. If you really want you this know, watch, you really die. I, I feel as passionately about this watch as Omega feels about improving it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, every exec in a, the Omega office just went, <clears throat> whoa. Hey, Dave, get off YouTube. It's really not appropriate to be on YouTube. That's safe for work. <laughs> straps, um, as many of you should know, bring a whole world of potential to mix up your watch collection. They breathe new life into watches. They help you pull out different colors. They, they give them new personality. Straps can be uh, very addictive. I know people with two watches and 10 straps because it adds so many facets to a collection in a, in a fairly you know, easy and fun way. So that's why they become such a part of the Theo and Harris you know, culture and identity. I think we sell more exotic straps than, than almost anybody because I just love them so much. I love sharing them with you. <laughs> the last thought we'll end is on is a thought that you say all the time with the Explorer. The Explorer should not be a steel watch anymore. That doesn't particularly make sense. Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't be wearing a watch, but if you were, it's titanium. Mm -hmm. It has this value, it has that, it has this, it has that. Same with this watch. The Omega Olympic Edition, honestly, should probably be a chronograph, first and foremost. But second off, why is it made out of steel and gold? Although I will counter, of course, like the originals were a little different design language being full rose gold. I feel like that had a stronger purpose. This to me just seems like a mix of like, no, oh, well, they'll like this. We'll just do golden. I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll even go a little bit further. Yeah. I think it's all wrong in theory. All of it. I think that Omega, every Olympics should release two watches, one for the executive viewer, Right, that, that that classic dress heritage, precious metal or stainless steel, I, I, whatever. Right, that classic, you know, with the updated logo. Yeah. Right, like yep. super and if, discreetly or or whatever. Like maybe on the case back or some something. The there. real rare, like real. Wow. And frankly, at this point, I think that the that the Omega, the the, the non dress Omega, probably should be a really incredible digital watch. Digital watch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It should be just a, just whatever, like, fantastic digital watch you can come up with, right, for, for everybody else, uh, because that is the technology now that, that actually measures time. Wow. Right? You want to measure time on your mechanical watch? This year, we do a time only. Next year, we do a chronograph, but elegant. And then the other one is a digital watch at, you know, at, at too much money, I'm sure. I was going to say, what's your price? I don't know. I, I don't even know. I have no point of reference, but expensive, right? $3,500, $4,000, whatever the number is. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's, you know, a little bit dorkier, but that's a thing. Insane. People like that. I would like that. Of Insane. Would. Everyone would I'd like that. I'd be like, I mean, that's so sick. Yeah. You'd be like, Fuck yeah, that's, you're embracing it. You're leaning into it. Mm. You're not just giving me a gold bezel and a thing on the case back. You're saying... Timing today, we are we are a horological company, we invest in horological development, but timing today for sport is not mechanical. Wow. It is digital, and here is the watch, and now this is the Olympic timer. And everyone would buy it. There you go. I think you killed it on this video. Thumbs up if you think Christian killed it. <laughs> All right, that's the uh, that's the Olympics. I'm that's sure it. there'll be no cheating this year. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Sydney McLaughlin will be in it? 
Who's it from your town? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably. You right? know why? Because she's one of the best runners in the yeah. world. Christian didn't know that. Yeah. I had no same high my, sister went to, my sister went to high oh, school with Sydney McLaughlin, and I thought that she was just a fast you know, girl so from school. Christian goes to me one day. So my sister was friends with this girl who's like a really good runner. She's fast. Sydney, Sydney uh, McLaughlin. McLaughlin or something like that. I'm like, what? She's very famous. <laughs> she's I, incredibly famous. She's really famous. I'm really? like, that's not what I was talking about. What I was going to talk about with this. <laughs> Tell me why she's famous later. I had a different point. <laughs> no, it actually was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up for more watch content. And uh, if you want more watch content, head on over to the po our podcast, link down below at the zero. It is not free, but we give out credits to all of our members for the leather shop. So you can immediately go spend all your credits and it washes out over the year anyway. So go ahead and join our family and listen to our weekly podcast. Boom.